Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and the iPhone 8 Plus and the iPhone 11 Pro Max are currently the oldest and the newest phones offered from Apple directly at the Apple Store or from Apple.com. You can get these new, but anything older than the iPhone 8 or 8 Plus is not available new from Apple. You can get it refurbished or used or left over at other stores that may still have them in stock. But the 8 and an 8 Plus is the oldest that you can currently get. So I thought I'd compare it with the 11 Pro Max. And in this video, I'm going to compare everything from the cameras to speed, to how they are to use battery life and a lot more. And if you'd like to jump to a specific point in the video, so you want to see how the speed is or how the battery life is, I'll link all of the time codes in the description below so you can check them out for yourself. Now, the first thing is the price. The iPhone eight plus comes in at $549 for the cheaper model up to $599 with 128 gigabytes of storage. It comes in space gray, silver, or gold. If you decide to go with the iPhone 11 pro max, it comes in at double the price at 1099 for the base model up to $1,449 for 512 gigabytes. It's available in space gray, silver, gold, and a new midnight green. Now the overall build of both phones is a little bit different. With the iPhone 8 Plus, the outside band here or the frame is made of aluminum. So that makes it feel a little bit different and lighter than that of the 11 Pro Max. The iPhone 11 Pro Max is made of stainless steel on the outside ring. So it gives it a little bit more weight and it's also glass front and back, but with the 11 Pro Max, you have frosted glass on the back with gloss only around the cameras. Now, the nice thing is with the 11 Pro Max, it does not pick up fingerprints on the back. So if you're someone like me that doesn't like to use a case that much, you won't see fingerprints on the back. But with the 8 Plus, you definitely will. It picks up fingerprints very easily, but that's easily solved with a case. Now this is glass front and back, and there are some very big differences with this glass. In fact, the eight plus has more durable glass when it comes to scratching and it's less durable when it comes to dropping it. So after using this for quite some time, when it first came out, I have very little scratches. There's one right there and that's it. That's the only scratch on the display. And that's not really a big deal for using it for about six months with no screen protector. The iPhone 11 pro max is very different. While it's more durable and less prone to breaking if you drop it, the screen is much more prone to scratching very easily. And that is why I have a screen protector on right now. After using this for about three months, I have a ton of scratches on it and I'll show you that in a moment. But first I want to talk about our sponsor and that is who makes this screen protector. And it's a company called Shell Aros and it's a very unique screen protector. You can see it's on here now. It doesn't have a single scratch on it and that's because it's a 99.9 99% Sapphire. This is the first Sapphire screen protector I've used and it's super clear. In fact, you may not have even noticed that it's on here. I'll take it off in just a moment, but it has an oleophobic coating just like the iPhone does. So you don't see a lot of fingerprints on it and it's truly a nine on the Mohs scale. So really only something along the lines of a diamond or a Sapphire is going to scratch this. In fact, I have a knife here and I can push this on the screen as much as I want. You won't see a single scratch. In fact, let me turn the display off. You won't see anything. I can scratch this all day long with this knife, the tip of this, you won't see a thing because it's very, very strong. And unless you bump something like a, a wedding ring or a diamond up against the display, you're not going to see scratches. So let me take this off. And while it will prevent some scratches, it will not prevent it from shattering necessarily, but this has zero scratches on it. You can see how clear it is. And I'll link this in the description below so you can take a look at them yourself. They're not inexpensive because this is true Sapphire. It's been on other channels as well, and they've proved it's Sapphire as well. So definitely check it out. I'll link it in the description below. Now I've been using that screen protector for about four days. It's been great but underneath it are a ton of scratches. Now, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it in this light, but there are tons of scratches all through here, all across the display, something I've never seen before on any iPhone. This iPhone is very prone to scratching lightly. Now, if it's bad enough, of course I could bring it in. I have Apple care. I could have them swap the display if it gets really bad or I crack the screen, but it's just something to keep in mind for something that costs double it is much more prone to scratching. So definitely use some sort of screen protector if that's going to bother you. 
Now let's talk about the displays themselves because they're very different. The iPhone 8 Plus has an LCD display and it's a really great LCD display, but it's LCD and won't have the deeper blacks that the iPhone 11 Pro Max or 11 Pro has. So it's a 5.5 inch LCD, 1920 by 1080 with 401 pixels per inch. It does have 3D touch unlike the 11 Pro Max, so it's pressure sensitive Although you do get the same features with the 11 Pro Max, this is a pressure sensitive display as opposed to just pressing and holding. So you do get that. It goes up to about 625 nits of brightness. So it is a nice and bright display, but it's not as bright as the 11 Pro Max. The 11 Pro Max has a 6.5 inch OLED display with HDR. It's 2,688 by 1,242 with a pixel density of 458 pixels per inch. It goes up to 800 nits regular brightness and can go brighter than that when it needs to play an HDR movie and it's just an incredibly vibrant and great looking display. It does have haptic touch so you can press and hold. You'll see it's a little bit slower than when I'm using 3d touch. It takes a little bit longer to pop up, but it does work just fine. It's just something that's not as nice as what we used to have. So just keep that in mind. Now, another thing to consider with the displays is the iPhone 11 Pro Max is an OLED display and Apple uses PWM to control the brightness or pulse width modulation. I've covered this in other videos as well, but what that basically means is the screen is always flickering to control brightness. The faster it flickers, the brighter the display will seem. So as you lower brightness, it will flicker slower. And while you can't see this with your eyes, you can see this with a camera. And this actually affects about one in 10 people and it causes headaches. It can cause you to feel nauseated and things like that. So I'm actually affected by this, but with the 11 pro max, they've changed the rate so that it's high enough that it doesn't bother my eyes. Prior iPhones with OLED displays, such as the iPhone 10, 10s and 10s max actually caused my eyes to have a lot of strain and it gave me headaches that doesn't happen with this phone so if you're prone to that just keep that in mind it may bother you but it is much better on the newer phones the 11 pro and pro max have better refresh rates for that pwm so it doesn't bother your eyes as much but definitely consider that if you're looking at both of these phones now when it comes to unlocking the phone this may be one of the main reasons you decide to go with the 8 plus because this has the touch id fingerprint sensor whereas we have face id on the 11 pro max now i've become very accustomed to face id it works fine i have no issues with it but if we show speed here i'll just press this and we're in. So normally what you do is you just pick up your phone and swipe up and you're in your phone. But with the eight pro or the eight plus you press and hold and it opens or unlocks the phone. So I know a lot of people still greatly prefer touch ID or would like the option of both. So if that's something that means a lot to you, obviously go with the eight plus you'll be happy with it. Now let's talk a little bit about the specs inside. The eight plus has the a 11 bionic with three gigabytes of Ram and it's plenty fast. I'll show you that in a moment. And then the iPhone 11 pro max has the a 13 bionic with four gigabytes of Ram. So even though the Ram is one gigabyte more, I think you'll see that we have very similar speeds with most things. So when you're going into everyday apps, the app store, that's not going to be a big deal. They're going to load about the same music is going to be about the same and intensive apps are also going to be about the same. So you're not going to see a lot of differences as far as loading applications. However, if you were to edit a 4k video and export it, that puts a lot of strain on the processor. So I thought I'd show you that in the video now. And then after that, we'll talk about the cameras. So let's go ahead and go into iMovie. Now I've loaded the same clip into the iMovie timeline, and then I've added a title on top so that it actually has to process this frame by frame. It's a 4k video. It's the exact same video on both. So I'll export this and this will push these processors pretty hard to export 4k video. It takes a while on my iMac pro when I'm editing video to actually push this sort of content out. So let's see how long it takes on both devices. So we'll hit done. We'll hit the share button. We'll hit save video and let me bring in a stopwatch here so that we can see how long it takes on both. So let's go ahead and see if we can hit 4k 4k and start. And there we go. And I'll speed this up so that you can see how long this takes. I would expect it'll take around five minutes or so. Now 
Now, both have exported, and it did take a little bit longer on the iPhone 8 Plus, but I'm not sure that it's worth double the price if that's what you're going for. Neither of these phones are warm on the back at all. Processing video seems to be pretty easy for them. So let's go ahead and close these and let's talk about the cameras. Now the cameras are where the iPhone 11 Pro Max excels and has a lot better camera than the 8 Plus in certain situations. Now the back camera on the 8 Plus is a dual 12 megapixel camera. One is a wide angle lens, one is a telephoto lens. We have an f1.8 aperture on the wide angle and an f2.8 on the telephoto. It records 4K 60 video as well. So it's a very capable video camera. I've used it even in more recent videos. I've used this or similar cameras to this. Now on the 11 Pro Max, we also have 12 megapixel cameras, but it's an all new sensor. We have a wide angle lens an f1.8. We have a telephoto f2.0 and we have a new ultra wide f2.4 aperture lens. We now have a night mode, they also record in 4k 60. So what I wanted to do in this video is show you some samples of photos side by side, some video as well. And then we'll talk about the forward facing cameras. since that's where the iPhone 8 Plus also does its best image processing when recording video. They're both pretty good, but I think the iPhone 11 Pro Max is just a little bit better depending on what situation you're using it in. Both cameras can both record 4K 30 and 2X as well. So you'll see we're zoomed in optically by two times. Then we can just zoom back out. The microphones are good in both of them, although the 11 Pro Max seems to be a little bit better. And when you're shooting directly at something like sunlight, they both do a good job of really adjusting so you can have pretty decent dynamic range. Now the forward facing cameras is where there is a huge difference. On the iPhone 8 Plus, the front camera is a seven megapixel camera with an F 2.2 aperture. It records in 1080p at 30 frames per second. So it's okay, but it's not incredible. On the iPhone 11 Pro Max, the forward facing camera could be used to vlog. It's that good. It's a 4K camera, 12 megapixel F 2.2 aperture that can record in 4K 60. It also can do Animoji and Mimoji if you're into that but it has great video. So let me show you the difference between the two. Now I'm using the forward facing camera on the 8 Plus and the 11 Pro Max. And I think this is where you're going to see the biggest difference. The 8 Plus is in 1080p and upscaled to 4K for this video, but you'll see the background isn't as nice. The dynamic range isn't as good as on the 11 Pro Max. Also, I think you'll notice a difference in the microphones as I've been switching between both devices. So here's the 11 Pro Max microphone. It does a good job of eliminating background noise and the 8 Plus is okay, but not as good. Now, as far as water resistance or resistance to dirt and dust, the iPhone 8 Plus is IP67 certified for one meter up to 30 minutes. So it's not bad, but the 11 Pro Max is IP68 certified, which means four meters for 30 minutes. They, they kind of went to the better side of IP68 and even made it a deeper depth that it can withstand for 30 minutes. Now that doesn't mean you won't get water in it at all, but it is better protected than phones that don't have it. Now battery life is where we see a huge difference as well. With the iPhone 8 Plus, we have a 2,691 milliamp hour battery. It's about the same as an iPhone 7 Plus, and you can expect 5.5 to 6 hours of screen on time with normal use. Now if you're playing a game or something like that, it will be less. But this here with the iPhone 11 Pro Max, Apple has really stepped up the battery size and it's almost 4,000 milliamp hours. It's 3,969 milliamp hours. It's 
this will get you about five hours more battery life than the eight plus, and you'll get about 10 to 12 hours of screen on time with normal use. Again, that will vary depending on how you use it. So that is a huge difference between the two and it's really nice, but you also get a fast charger with the 11 pro max in the box. So you can charge it a little bit quicker. You can fast charge the eight plus, but you will need to buy the adapter separately. Now, as far as the speakers are concerned, there is a very big difference there as well. So I'm not sure you'll be able to hear this, but let me play one of my videos for you so you can sort of hear the difference. Now I have both phones side by side. I'll move the microphone so you can hear the difference between the two of them. We're in here for Zolotech and iOS 13.3 has been out for a few days. I've been using it primarily on my iPhone 11 Pro Max. This is my main device. I've also used On Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 13.3 has been out for a few days. I've been using it primarily on my iPhone 11 Pro Max. This is my main device. I've also used it on the iPhone 11, which isn't right here. And then I have it on the iPad Air 2. We'll talk about that in a little now, hopefully you could hear the difference between the speakers of the eight plus and the 11 pro max. The 11 pro max is definitely a lot louder and cleaner at the higher volumes. Also, you've got better stereo sound. And if you're watching a movie, you almost get a surround sound feel when you're watching something on the 11 pro max. So that's definitely something to consider. Now, if you're trying to decide which one to pick, well, you could get two eight pluses for the price of an 11 pro max, but you may not want an older display or an LCD display, but things to consider are things like face ID versus touch ID. If you like the home button, obviously go with the eight plus. Also the speed doesn't seem to be much of a con consideration here, but the cameras are definitely better on the 11 pro max, especially for video and battery life is significantly better on the 11 pro max due to its huge battery. But if those things aren't a big deal for you, then of course, pick the eight plus also with both of them. Uh, they're both premium devices and I think you'll get years of use with the eight plus. I think it'll be supported for quite a few years still in the future with iOS 14 or iOS 15, but right now iOS 13 runs great on it. So those are all things to consider. Let me know what you think in the comments below and which one you've picked and why, if you still want that home button, I would love to see them bring a home button option back as well. I know a lot of people that still really miss the home button on the 11 pro and pro max, but let me know your your thoughts in the comments below. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description as I always do. And thanks again to Shell R Us for sending along the screen protector. This is by far the best screen protector I've ever used. I love that you really can't scratch it without some very, very hard stones, such as a diamond, and I'll link it to them in the description below. So you can check them out for yourself. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.